Today I'm going to show you how I made this six foot long growth chart on the Stepcraft M1000 CNC and we'll show you how we do it with tiling. So we do have the plans available for this on our website. Definitely check those down below if you want to make this for yourself. Without further ado, let me show you how I made it. Starting on a new project to make a growth chart on the Stepcraft M1000 CNC, I'm laying down some ore mask 813 that will allow me to carve through this and paint right up against that. I am setting a reference point here on the front of the CNC, that way I can do some tiling here. I'm using a V-bit to set the X and Y zero position, that way we can get that set a little bit more accurately than we were doing that with an end mill. So within the Vetrix software, we're going to go through and do the tiling toolpath. So we opened up the tiling manager and you can see that I have a length set here, which is going to be the length that I have cut on the CNC, so that way I have a reference point. Now we're going to go through and save out those toolpaths, and you can see that once we do that, we create a T1 and a T2. So that stands for tile one and tile two, and that's going to allow us to carve the six foot board on a CNC that does not have a cut capacity of six feet. So using the 46200-K, one eighth inch down cut bit, we're gonna pick that up and cut in all of the ruler lines for that growth chart going up to that first tile length. So it's going through doing a really nice job. The down cut action of this bit leaves a perfectly clean top surface, which is exactly what we wanna see. If you love this type of content, be sure to subscribe to our channel and go ahead and hit that bell so that you'll be notified on all of the new videos when they're released. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Tools Today. After we're done with all of the ruler lines, we'll go back and carve in the numbers that will make up the growth chart. This growth chart is designed to hang six inches off the ground. So we're starting at six inches off the ground on center. So we went through and carved all the rest of that. We got it moved out of the way. Then we can get it unclamped and we'll just move it and line it up with that same position that we had before. Since our reference point is something that was cut on the CNC, it's really easy to get everything fully lined up. So we'll begin carving through here, but you can see that there is a little bit of flex in this board. This is after it was cut. I didn't feel the need on pine to support it, but with harder woods, it's definitely necessary to support that. So you can definitely use a roller stand or some sort of material support on the part that is hanging off. I think it's really cool to see this thing carving a uh, six foot long board all in one shot. So then we'll drop that off, pick up the RC-45711 90 degree V insert bit, and go through and carve in a name on the growth chart as well. So this bit does a really nice job through this masking, leaving perfectly clean cuts, which is definitely something that you need to have when you're using this masking. Those lines that it's creating are gonna be what separates the paint from the area that you do not want painted. And if you have something like an upcut bit and tear out the masking, it's going to leave all of those markings on the board itself. You'll have to do manual cleanup with that. So it went through, did a nice job, and we have our six foot long board fully carved. So now we can get that pulled off of the CNC, take it over to the workbench, and we're going to apply some sanding sealer first. So the sanding sealer seals the grain and prevents any sort of bleeding. Sometimes you can get some bleed through on the grain. I made sure that I did that on the end grain as well as the side too. So then I used some general finishes, driftwood milk paint available on our website to go through and paint those in. Once that was dry, I use a heat gun to heat up the masking so that way it makes it a little bit easier to pull off and you don't have any sort of grain pull issues as you're pulling off the masking like you can have if it sits around for a little while. So we went through and used a weeding tool as well to get out all of the inner parts of the masking on the numbers and letters and it left a beautifully clean smooth finish and definitely really nice to see. So then we went through and sanded off the remaining paint that got on the edges since we didn't have those protected but since we used the sanding sealer sanded off really easy. Then I just went through and broke all of those edges so that there's no sharp areas. We'll use some Minwax spray lacquer and satin to finish this piece off and I definitely love the way that it looks. You can see that everything is nice and accurate here as we are lining up with all numbers exactly on center which is exactly what we want. As I said before it's designed to hang six inches off the ground to clear any baseboards or anything like that. Even after we did the move everything is still perfectly accurate. It's nice to see that on this piece. So this six foot long piece is done. We do have the plans available for this on our website so definitely check that out there if you're interested in making it yourself. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you love this type of content be sure to subscribe right over here and for more great videos click right over here.